Hi everyone, welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell. We are back again with someone from the community, and that someone is Jonathan Harvey. Since 2018, Jonathan has been the music director of the Brattleboro Concert Choir, and soon after, he formed the Brattleboro Camerata at the Brattleboro Mus Music Center. He's an associate professor of music and director of choirs at Fitchburg State University, and Jonathan's research and academic writing on the dynamic aspects of music are testaments to his commitment to ensure that classical music is a living, breathing art form. He will be conducting Songs of the People, a concert for this moment in history, January 13th and 14th at the Latches Theater. We'll have information about that at the end of the show. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, Wendy, how are you? Good to see you. Good to be here. Thanks for making the trip on a really super rainy day. Yeah, it's a fun, fun drive. Yeah, <laughs> it's a flighty kind of day. Your early years were in Ann Arbor. That's true. Yeah, I grew up in Michigan. You said that you had music in the home, but no one in particular was a musician. That's true, yeah. My, both of my parents, huge music consumers and appreciators, uh -huh. but, but the, the joke is that my dad played clarinet for a year, and that, that must be where my music career came from, <laughs> was that, that year of clarinet. Were there any early signs of your music ability or interest in music? There is a family story uh, that my, my mom was pregnant with me when the Prince film, Purple Rain, uh, was released in theaters. And my parents, again, being, being big music supporters and aficionados, went and saw it in theaters. And the opening moment with the big, crunchy guitar riff, apparently I just moved outward in every direction at that moment. And, and the, another family story is that, that's, that that is the moment that they knew that there was something something musical going on. That's so great. For Prince. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, still still one of my very favorites. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. He was he was pulling you toward him. In school, you did a lot of singing. I did. And played the tuba. I did, yeah. yeah. How did that happen? In the Ann Arbor Public Schools, there's a program um, where in every elementary school in fifth grade, every student is uh, given the opportunity to learn to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, it is uh, singing and uh, recorders but mm. real sort of orchestral band instruments that begins in fifth grade. And um, they run this day where it's sort of an instrument petting zoo, where every kid <laughs> gets to go and try out, you know, strumming a guitar, running a bow across strings. Um, and then each kid gives their top three choices. And they promise you that you will get one of your three. Uh -huh. My top choice was cello. My second choice was tuba. My third choice was percussion and they gave me tuba because I was one of the only kids who was tall enough to be able to reach the mouthpiece on the tuba while sitting in a chair. So <laughs> that's, that's what set a path. <laughs> did you enjoy it, the oh, tuba? I love, I love playing tuba. You yeah. do? Yeah. Do you, do you still play? Do you still sing? I do sing yeah. very frequently still. Uh, playing tuba is, is not something that I've done in a long time. That was sort of the central of my musical life for for most of my childhood, and, and uh, I haven't really done very much since I finished undergrad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I can tell with the singing, you have a very resonant voice, so I, I can tell that, that you would probably be a really good singer. I, yeah. I sing on occasion, yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you most enjoy singing? Oh, I most enjoy singing probably the kinds of things that the Brattleboro Camerata performs, small yeah. groups, mm -hmm. very, um, kind of intimate collaborative music making, you're one of, you're maybe the only person singing your part or yeah. with another couple of people, but in an ensemble setting, right. I, I love. Yes, and when you were in college, um, you were studying music and philosophy. That's true. Was it history of music or, or, or what? The, the school that I went to, <laughs> uh, a small Quaker affiliated liberal arts school mm -hmm. called Earlham College, um, there was a BA in music degree mm -hmm. So it was my, my focus was on performing, but I took ethnomusicology courses, music history courses, music yeah. theory courses, sort of all aspects. Yes, and you've continued to be very interested in, in all of the aspects of music. That's, that's true, yeah. And in, in a lot of ways, you, depending on, on what path you follow, um, after sort of specifying then you kind of have to zoom back out and be a generalist in a lot of yeah. a lot of forums. During or after college, you did some traveling as well, and I think that there was also a music connection with that, going to I, Austria. I, yeah, yeah. So when I was um, when I was a sophomore at Earlham in undergrad, one of the study abroad was a big 
uh, value at Earlham and the idea of sort of broadening your perspective and international education being a way to do that. I was there for a semester, got to see more more classical music than I may have in total up to that point in my life. It's the, the way that I kind of came away from that experience thinking about music in, in that culture, in that moment, was yeah. classical music was to Vienna what professional sports are in the United States. <laughs> Posters everywhere, big faces of the conductors wow. and the soloists. It's, it's really, it was, and this was a while ago now, but it was yeah. really, um, just very eye-opening to me. Yeah. yeah, well, that's one thing I think that's so interesting about music in particular, um, and for you to have that kind of really condensed experience of a lot of music over a period of time, mm -hmm. is that it really gets into your body. Yeah. You, you start embodying it yeah. in a certain kind of way. Yeah. Um, did that did that experience affect your your um, I guess thinking about conducting? or where you, where you were gonna go with music? The conducting as a path was a fairly late choice in my undergraduate. Now I, you know, late being relative because by the time I finished undergraduate, I went straight into a master's program in choral conducting at Indiana University, so I, uh -huh. I knew by then. But when I was, I believe I was a junior at Earlham, and as part of my degree program, I took a class called basic conducting or conducting one and it was the worst grade of any grade <laughs> that I got in any class going all the way back into you know public school <laughs> all the way through and um, was was told by by that professor that maybe to to think about you know tuba as being my focus because that you know I would I had done the concerto competition at Earlham as a tuba player when I was a sophomore I think um, so I, I, was, I was getting a lot of positive feedback for tuba playing, but there was something about conducting and that class, and then also having played and sung under lots of different conductors, I, I really was attracted to the idea of being able to make choices about mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. And conducting seemed to be a way like where I could do that. Uh -huh. And that low grade, did not stop me. I took the next conducting class. He 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 let me in. Um, I didn't fail conducting one, so I could go on to the next course in the sequence. And um, yeah, it's kind of the rest is history. You've done a lot of writing, um, a lot of pedagogy, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and you've you've published quite a bit. But what surprised me um, reading about what you've written is the subjects sounded so interesting. For instance, a beginner's guide to prophecy. Bang for your buck. Consciousness of gender identity as educators. And I think one that is sort of speaking to what you just said is uh, real talk, which is about um, developing a sense of belonging within a music community, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. Well, not necessarily specifically a musical community. This is uh, sort of an area of exploration that has come out of my work at Fitchburg State. There, um, there's a small group of faculty there. Um, it's now an, an ever-growing group that is was interested in exploring the pedagogy of a particular scholar named Paul Hernandez, who's actually based in central Massachusetts, was the provost of a nearby community college, mm -hmm. um, is now working for um, nationwide educational nonprofit. But he developed this idea of a pedagogy of real talk, is what he called it. And the idea is that instructors in the classroom share personal stories from their real life on some kind of universal theme, uh -huh. an idea that anybody would be able to relate to. And then you invite your students, also in the room, to share related stories yeah. on that same theme. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you break down that idea of the professor is the sage on the stage and there's some sort of wall yes. between the students and the, and the faculty, but instead we're or a community of learners that recognizes each other's mutual humanity. Yeah. And um, so I have been doing a fair amount of presenting and writing on how you do that work in a musical rehearsal setting. Uh huh. Yeah. And it seems like you have a lot of curiosity about a lot of facets in music, in particular. I, I think that may be why 
I chose to pursue music is because it, it never bores me. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. And so you're bringing this idea of actually kind of an empathy with the, your students, mm -hmm. um, which I assume would translate into a chorale, you know, if you're doing that, or orchestra. Yeah, very yeah. much so. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I mean, thinking in terms specifically of the Brattleboro Concert Choir, that is a group of really special and important people to me. Mm. Um, and and I, I want to make sure that they know that so that we are doing our very best to make sure that together as a group of musicians we're putting something together that we can be proud of uh -huh. and that the audience is going to be interested in. And mm -hmm. if there's that separation with a sort of, you know, the, the older model of conductor as a sort of dictatorial taskmaster, mm. I don't think that you get, particularly in a group like the concert choir that is volunteer folks. They yeah. do it because they love it. Right. To, to create this sense of community and belonging helps us do the musical work that much more effectively. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a win-win situation that's going on. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and it, yeah, I may not be a completely objective observer, right? You know, it, it's, it's sort of my outlook and, and I think it yields good results. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to embarrass you for a moment, if you don't mind, because I've got a great quote from <laughs> someone who is in um, Yes, oh boy, who was okay. in your, your, one of the choruses, um, and this is it, quote, I have sung for many conductors over my lifetime, including some, some with national prominence. I would be hard pressed to find a more gifted conductor than Jonathan. He is a joy to sing for, and working with him has been a pleasure. He is also a really nice and kind person. <laughs> I won't tell you who said it. I'm gonna blush. I know. Well, you know, we can edit this out as well. So if you say no, I'll, I'll do the editing. I just thought I would throw that in because it's really speaking to what you're talking about, which is creating a community of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know um, you mentioned to me the other day during the pandemic you had to do a lot of things by Zoom. Yeah. 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 And, and it, you had only been here for oh one and a half seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. In that spring of 2020, we were putting together a performance that was going to be happening in May 2020. And just like everything else, we very, there was one Wednesday evening where we had a rehearsal and people were talking about, I don't know, how much are we going to be able to do this? Are we going to have to take a couple yeah. weeks off? Mm -hmm. And then by that Friday, we knew that we, pretty, we weren't going to be back for a, quite a while. Right. And so in order to maintain that sense of community, we uh, met on Zoom yeah. at the same time that we would meet for regular rehearsals on Wednesday evenings, um, except instead of at the music center, we would meet in our living rooms on the computer screens. And at first the idea was we want to keep thinking about this music because we're losing rehearsal time that then we'll be performing in May. Yeah. Then it became clear that that wasn't going to happen. These meetings became much more focused on the idea of just maintaining that connection to each other mm -hmm. when we were so isolated. So mm -hmm. it, it really was about this musical group, not just about music. Mm -hmm. In fact, maybe not even primarily about music for yeah. some folks, but it's about being in community with each other. As you sort of grew yourself into conducting, um, what were the things that, that were really feeding you during that time? That idea mm -hmm. of, of being able to make choices and yeah. sort of shape a performance, shape and experience was was really powerful and attractive to yeah. me. And then also, frankly, the the community building aspect that, that we were talking about a little bit earlier, the idea of working with an ensemble as a way of creating a creating a space where we can express ourselves yeah. comfortably mm -hmm. and we can create something beautiful that would be impossible without other people. Yeah. And I think that that experience um, is, is rarer and rarer as time passes. The yes. idea of gathering a community to create something beautiful together. Yes. And, and I think it's tremendously powerful. And in harmony. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Hopefully. And you had, you had actually mentioned earlier that, that idea of you know, gathering with like-minded folks, creating this yeah. community. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that the like mind is that desire to be 
musically expressive together. Yeah. I'm not sure how much else you need in common besides right, that motivation, right, which right. is also one of the amazing parts about making music and community together because there are so few other ways to make community in the contemporary world with people that you don't agree with, yes, potentially. Yes, yes. So I, I think it's really, in that way, it has taken on, you know, in recent years, a different sort of feeling, is that this is a place where we can we can gather as one. We can come together, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and sing a song. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's one thing. You know, talking about Christmas music, you know, or holiday music in general. Um, we know all the, the words of these songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, for better or worse, yeah. we know all the words of these yeah. songs, and so we can come together yeah. and sing. That. And that's so true of um, of so many other kinds of music. For me, mm -hmm. you know, it's mostly rock and roll, like Purple Rain. Sure. You know? yeah. um, I'm really interested in what you say about it was a place where you could make choices. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, as, as an individual tuba player or an individual singer, most often I would be in ensemble settings, in uh -huh. a band or an orchestra or a choir, and the conductor, their position is to, at the most basic level, take all of the folks in the room and get everyone to agree on what direction we want to move. Mm -hmm. But that direction is, I mean, can be determined in any number of ways, right? What did the composer intend for this particular piece? Um, what kinds of strengths does the ensemble bring to yeah, the piece? Right. Um, but then a significant part of it is the conductor bringing their own musical experience and musical values to bear. Yeah. And those choices of thinking about, you know, how does a piece, how do you create a story with a piece? What are you trying to communicate with a piece of music? And I knew that there were very powerful choices to be made hmm. and by the conductor, and I, I thought it would be so fun to be the one who made those choices. Oh, interesting. Um, because, you know, those of us who don't have understanding of a lot of what you're talking about in terms of classical music yeah, and yeah. conducting, yeah. you know, we see someone up there and, right. um, you know, this Bernstein film is coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that Bradley Cooper, who was the whole, you know, the director and, and started in it, said that from an early age he wanted to conduct. And he thought when he first saw Bernstein conducting, he thought that the music came out of the baton. Uh -huh. I love that. I, I believe it, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're certainly, the fewer barriers, the fewer kind of cognitive processes that need to happen in the musicians in order for them to create the expressive yeah. ideas, the more direct that connection can be, the better, I think. So yeah. the more the conductor can sort of physically embody these ideas, yeah, so it. the musicians don't have to think about it, they just are That's compelled so to do it. Interesting. Yeah. So you are offering that to them. You you are showing. You are embodying. I'm trying the experience. Yeah. 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 Well, I've seen you conduct, and I have to say it's a thing of beauty. Actually. Gonna make me blush. Again. Well, that's good. That's good. It's good for your, you know, your blood circulation. Um, and and one thing that so impresses me too, Jonathan, is that watching someone conduct, um, like really watching them instead of beholding the orchestra, you mm -hmm. know, as a whole, is the fact that. And I was watching watching you um, when you were conducting, realizing you've got you're paying attention to so many different things at the same time. You have to see the macro, mm -hmm. and you have to be so aware of the micros, mm -hmm. the individual players. Um, it's a kind of multitasking that perhaps does that come more easily. The more obviously it probably does the more you do it, mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's quite a skill. I I think that there. Yes, with experience, absolutely, is, is where it comes from, I think. Um, the, that idea of being both in the detail and the big picture in the present moment, and then also in the future and in the past, thinking in terms of you know, music unfolding yeah, over time. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's all, it all has to be going at the same time. That's yeah. true, and, and I think that's another part, another reason that music is, is what I would want to do because it's impossible to get complacent while doing that is that it's really musicians and, and athletes sometimes talk about like a flow mm. state yeah. where you are where mm -hmm. you are thinking about nothing else and right. that is 
you, you really can't think about anything else when you have right. all those different things it's going on. That yeah. kind of focus, yeah. you know, you have to be on it. Yes, yeah. and and if you look at, at musicians in an orchestra, the focus that that they have is so intense. Yeah. 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 Stepping into the. Um, uh, Brattleboro uh, Music Center, yeah. um, and especially the concert choir in particular, is quite a legacy. Blanche Moise, mm -hmm. and then Susan Dedell, mm -hmm. and now you. Um, and so, uh, and it was uh, Blanche Moise who started it in um, 52, 1952. Susan came on in 89. So you are coming into, um, when you talk about music legacy, yeah. you know, and music history, yeah. and uh, so you've, you've got a place there now. I, I feel that very keenly, yeah. yes. And I had been, before I began uh, in, in the position that I have now, I was, I, I was certainly aware of the Music Center. I was aware of hmm. Blanche's legacy um, and the fact that the Brattleboro Concert Choir with Susan did really high quality and interesting work. Yeah. Yeah. And just so just being a, being a classical musician in this region, meant that you knew about what was going on at the BMC. Yes. And, and then to see that position open and think, wow, wouldn't, wouldn't that be fun? And then apply and then and get to do it. I, I feel lucky every time I walk into that space. Yeah. Well, it's so cool because you're know, talking about um, you making choices as a conductor. So you have a piece of music that's historical, goes back to the 1600s or 1700s, and you are coming in and you're making choices about how that is going to be presented. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering, uh, what do you what do you feel? What do you know that you're bringing to the BMC? That is a great question. Um, I think I bring to the BMC an outlook on what music is for and how music and community can interact with one another. That is really well matched with. The BMC's outlook, and I think the community of Brattleboro more broadly. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I think that's a really important. There, there's a certain, I mean, for lack of a better term, a certain cultural match that needs to happen. I think. Yes. And and I think that my outlook is is one that that works well in that uh -huh. context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I also think that my. Um, I mean, my experience working with large choirs was one of the reasons I think that I, you know, I would have even gotten a, a second glance putting myself forward for that position. Because I had worked with large choirs for quite a while um, in Western Massachusetts m most recently. Um, and then my interest in early music, Renaissance era music, mm -hmm. which is what my, a lot of, a lot of my other academic writing is on music of that era. And, um, and I know that when the Music Center wondered if I would be interested in starting the Camerata in 2021, they, they were sort of thinking, we, we know that Jonathan really loves this music and there's a place for that at the BMC. Uh, so uh -huh. there was sort of another kind of match that, yes. that happened. Are there other things in Brattleboro that you are finding your match for? I, well, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that, um, that I remember most directly um, was for the first time, and this, this would have been several years before I started working at the BMC, but coming to the strolling of the heifers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, having, having Bernie Sanders walk down the street and wave to everybody, um, that, that sort of simultaneously quirky and serious sense of community yeah. assembling um, I really liked the way that that felt. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Brattleboro's got the quirk yes. element. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does. Well, I, growing up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, home of the University of Michigan, um, the quirkiness that comes from a college town, yeah. uh -huh. and then having lived <laughs> in Western Massachusetts for a while, Amherst and Northampton, yes. the same sort of college town, yeah. real, again, sort of with an artistic bent, but yeah. thinking about creativity and intellectual life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I feel very much at home with Brattleboro oh, in that really way. that's really wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's often been called uh, College Town Without the College. Yeah, I 100% yeah. I yeah. agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jonathan, tell us a little bit about this upcoming concert because it sounds fascinating and unusual. Different kind of format, different kind of um, things that you're addressing. Yeah, I am, I am really, really looking forward to this set of performances on um, a Saturday evening and Sunday afternoon. Um, the idea of the concert is that we are 
presenting music of living composers mm -hmm. who are either American or based in America, and all of the pieces speak in some way to issues um, that are very relevant in our time, specifically climate change, immigration, civil rights, and these pieces have different perspectives on that, some more specific, some broader, um, but then we've also uh, made connections with some community organizations yeah. in the Brattleboro area um, at the suggestion of the singers of the concert choir. Mm -hmm. um, so they would, they would suggest organizations that they felt connected closely to the ideas in the repertoire. Mm -hmm. And then we, we reached out to those organizations. And so in the lobby of the Latches, as we have those performances, as folks come in and as they leave, these organizations have um, are going to have space in the lobby to sort of share the work that they're doing. And um, some of them are, are going to speak from the stage at a, a kind of midpoint in oh, the concert nice. as well. So the idea is to like you, like you said in, in, in my bio of, of what I do, just this idea of classical music being a living, breathing art form. So often the music that a group like the concert choir does is from a long time ago. Mm. And I feel very strongly that music of any time can speak very clearly to the human condition and what we experience today. Mm -hmm. But when you have music that's written now, like there, there are a couple pieces that were written last year that we're performing in this concert, and music that speaks to right now, mm -hmm. being presented alongside bringing attention to work that folks are doing to grapple with these issues yes. right now. Um, I think it's really, I, I'm just really excited to be able to sort of, it's again about building community, yeah, right? Yeah, and and bringing attention to these to these ideas that we all grapple with. Yeah, yeah, and also again, <clears throat> excuse me, making choices. You know, the, the different organizations that are coming, um, and, and Brattleboro is a great place because we have a lot of organizations yes, that are doing yeah. fabulous yeah. things. Yeah. Um, so making those choices, but also, you know, I, as you're talking, I'm, I'm getting sort of a visual image, you know, of um, these different people representing different parts of our community mm -hmm. and the influence that they are having. Mm -hmm. And you are bringing forward, you know, uh, music from the past, mm -hmm. uh, music perhaps from the present, mm -hmm. um, which uh, you're creating a form that is also for the future. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's unusual, yeah. you know, to have a concert like this. I, th I think, I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to suggest that, like, nobody does things like this, but I do think it's very, I think it's very cool for a volunteer group like the Concert Choir right. mm -hmm who is in the community, you know, if, if in, a, in a context of a professional group that may tour or something like yeah. that, doing music that, that speaks to the present yeah. is, is absolutely something that happens all the time and, and more and more frequently doing mm -hmm. newer music and music uh, written by folks who are part of parts of groups that have been marginalized for a long time, mm -hmm. happening more and more, which is really good and important. Mm -hmm. um, that a group that is made up of folks who are there just because they love it mm -hmm. and it's the way they want to spend their Wednesday night together um, to then connect with their values and the organizations that they see in their community in our community as being particularly valuable and then performing music that connects very directly with that work yes that that I think is yeah potentially at least unusual, I guess I would say. Yeah. yeah, unusual and I think probably very powerful. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to be. Well, we encourage folks to go out and s go to the concert, which is, again is January 13th and 14th, a Saturday and a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday night and Sunday afternoon, at the Latches Theater. So it's going to be big capacity there. Yes, yes. Um, and you, there will be information at the end of the show about um, how to get in touch with uh, the BMC about tickets. Um, I encourage everybody to go and check it out and to watch Jonathan conduct and <laughs> and or, say hi. Or or watch the singers that are your that are your friends and everybody, your and yes. your neighbors. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. It's, it's been, been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> lots of fun. <laughs>
thanks to all of you for being with us today and for hearing about yet another fabulous thing that's happening in our community. Um, we have so much going on here, you know, whether it's music or um, people doing all of the various things from tattooing to um, retail stores on Main Street. You know, we've, we've just got such an array. So thank you. Thank you for being part of the community. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.